Hey everyone, I'm Cody with Up to Code. Today I'm going to show you how to build a freestanding modern pergola. So as you can see, the hot tub was already in place when we started this. The homeowner's a buddy of mine, his name's Andrew. He pre-drilled the holes and then he asked us just to put it up. This is actually more complicated than I thought. And you'll see as you get into the video, but just briefly right now, so you know what the video is about, is we've actually got fairly technical on the math, a couple different ways of squaring things, adjusting, making sure things are plumb, lots of tips on how to brace, couple different ways of doing that and basically a lot more information than I thought. I also do a layout of how to figure out exactly so that every joist is the exact same space in between. So I go through math on that and the squaring math and everything. So stay tuned, watch how we did it. I think it's pretty cool. And then after this is done, we're going to go over here. We're going to do another pergola. This will be a separate video. We're gonna build a deck with a square notch out, some stairs, and then depending on what happens, we're gonna build this ground level deck and wrap around the hot tub. So probably the hardest thing about this is the fact that the hot tub was already in place. So we had to stand our posts up, try to get them square, get them pretty close to plumb, and then figure out how to get them all square in proper dimension, and then just keep adjusting until we we're bang on and happy. And then after that, the top was pretty easy. We're gonna get started today. This is the concept drawing that my friend Andrew has given me. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do a modern pergola. We're gonna do that over the hot tub area. Then we're gonna have a grade level deck. So we're gonna have a deck that's on the ground, all that wraps around the deck, or around the hot tub, I mean, comes over there. So this is kind of the concept drawing that we did there. And then, this is a little more of a detailed drawing of what we're doing on the deck. I can't see that at all. So, so first off, we're going to get this pergola built around the hot tub. And the whole goal of my video is to show you multiple ways to figure things out, different ways to build this. This is going to be a little more high tech. I have another deck video where it's just a simple deck build, square structure, easy to level. But today we have multifaceted things going on, different heights and the posts running through the deck are gonna complicate it. So I wanna show you different ways to square things off, plumb your posts, cut lots of different tricks. I wanna show you how to use basic tools. I'm gonna to use my fancy tools because I actually own them, but if I wanna show you ways that you can do it at home without having you know, a couple grand worth of tools on hand, right? Try to keep it simple for you, give you lots of different methods and uh, lots of tricks. So this video is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be long, but stay tuned. We're gonna keep it fast. We're not gonna dilly dally. We're not gonna tell big long stories and the info is gonna be jammed. There's gonna to be tons in there. Cameraman trap, don't fall in the holes here. We got them blocked up. We open this hole, it's four feet deep. The homeowner wanted just six by sixes in the ground. It'll be a lot easier and better to do. So we want the top of the pergola at the bottom of this belly band. So when I estimated my materials, I just stuck the old tape down in there. And I have 13 feet. So what I'm gonna do is I'll probably cut those to 14 feet. I'll leave them a little bit long and then I'll cut them after. That way I can, I can level it all in because these are modern pergolas so they want them nice and kind of uh, lineal and sleek and clean. So we want them all deadly level and we want it just a nice clean look. Unfortunately, the store only had 16 foot six by sixes. So I'm just gonna lob these off to uh, 16 feet right now. Or, well, they're 16 feet already. I'm gonna lob them down to 14. So, I don't like the top of this post, so I'm just gonna cut it this way. So I need 13 feet, cut to 14 feet. Don't screw it up. So for this, 
Once we get going, I have an eight and a half inch skill saw or circular saw. When they're all placed up and I get it level, I'm actually gonna just try to cut it with two cuts, one on one side, one on the other, cut the post off. But for now, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna just use a cordless skill saw, circular saw, whatever. We're gonna square this up and then we'll just saws all through it. So that's how you can do it with just some basic tools. So we're just gonna square that. So we're square. I'm just gonna cut it on one side, flip it, flip it, cut it on the other, finish it off with the sawzall. Probably to be safe, I'll just cut it on all four sides and then it's just less sawzalling. Yep, that's a word too. So you can see that worked perfectly fine just using a smaller saw and just finishing it with the sawzall. If you have the eight and a half inch saw like we do, it's just two cuts instead of five, whatever. At least you can get it done with basic tools. Now what I was thinking of doing, because I got apprentice Brett here with me today, I think I was maybe gonna cut this up and tape some blocks to my feet. So I'm at least a little bit closer in height to this guy. <laughs> now this post, I want there. The next post we're gonna go on the far corner, we'll just plop them in. Cut side down? Cut side up. The reason I'm pre-cutting these, so when I cut it to height later, I don't have so much weight bearing down. So when I'm gonna cut my saw like this on four sides, I don't want it to pinch the blade too bad. So if I only have a foot of post, it'll less likely to kick back than if I have three feet of post on it. Rookie. This will be the trickiest part of this pergola. And what we have to do is first, I'm gonna get these posts parallel with the house. I gotta get them all relatively plumb. Then I have to make sure that my distance this way and this way are equivalent. And then we gotta do a diagonal dimension, make sure we're square to the world. And then we just gotta, as we tweak things, we gotta just make sure that we're still plumb double check so there'll be a lot of kind of back and forth but once these are set and true then it's a matter we can put our top perimeter up joist it we'll have our turnbuckles i'll show you the turnbuckles they're super handy and then we can concrete these in i want to like i don't normally use six by six but the homeowner obviously doesn't want a laminated two by six because it doesn't look as nice so i want to get this done fairly soon to try to basically set it so they won't twist on us so with that, we're gonna set up our turnbuckles and we're just gonna kind of start pulling some dimensions and figuring things out. And as we go, in typical Cody fashion, my super digital smart board here, we're gonna show you some diagrams to help it make sense. Turnbuckles, I have videos on these, best invention ever, so simple to use and tweak things. What I'm gonna do is I just need to figure out how long I need my braces. I'm gonna go about 14 feet total That'll give me about 10 feet high, 10 feet out, which makes a 45 degree angle. So that's about what I need. I'll build some of these right now. Super happy we found these stakes here. I forgot about this trick. I didn't even think we were gonna use it, but as the hamster wheel is turning here, I figured, okay, this will be the easiest way to keep these posts relatively plumb. We can manipulate them back and forth, get everything square, and then we'll use the turnbuckles after. And I'll show you some tricks on how to, we don't need a million of them, we only need four. 
But for now, we'll show you how. We just pound these stakes in with a hammer, set the post plumb. Now we can actually get that post relatively parallel with the house and we can just start massaging our dimensions. So that other post is 14 and 3 eighths from the, the foundation. We're 13 and a half on this one. We got to gauge the holes too, because this hole, I don't want to go much further this way. So with the stakes and the way we're doing it, we might just pin this one here, go back, move that one back. But I'll show you how the stakes work. Like I said, it's a lot of just kind of massagey kind of stuff. Okay. Hold that beast relatively plumb this way. We might, well, I don't think we can move it much more to the outside. Okay. And we're about square with the world. Lath works perfect. This is darn close. Luckily we found them here. Building. How plumb are we there, my friend? Right around there. Okay. Don't hit my hand. We're going to get these two against the house parallel because that we have to have that before we can square anything. We can manipulate the dimension this way depending on those two posts over there. So we want to move this over about a half an inch. I'll just take this. Now I'll just remember to put it in a new screw location. Okay, hey Brett, you're gonna try to tweak that over. I'll try to hold it relatively plumb. Whoa, Jeez. whoa, rookie of the year. Okay, we're gonna hold that plumb, but we moved it probably like an inch and a half. Easily. Okay, just hold it there. Okay. Well, 12 and a half, yeah, so now we get to tweak it back. I guess maybe just try to lift it back, Brett. I'll hold this. Just try to use your man muscles. Yep. Maybe a scooch more. Yep. Noise. This. Either side, don't care. Oh yeah. Got right around there. 13 and three quarters. Should be able to make that work. Okay. Plumb there. Yep. Closest we could get this post this direction was 13 and 3 eighths. So we'll tweak this. Then what I'm gonna do, we're actually, we'll do it right now, is we'll get a rough idea of the width of these. So let's just say roughly 118 in between. We'll make sure that these posts are gonna be close. We'll tweak that post so it's parallel and then we just want to, yeah, like I said, it's just back and forth. What we're going to do, hold your post relatively plumb and take my tape. Actually, if we go a little lower, Brad, it'll be more accurate. Shit, we're like 113 and a half. Yeah. Do you want to measure the other one? Like, well, like, like well just so we know, we'll punch these posts. Well, then there's the square too. Parallel is one thing, square is another. Yeah, there's not much you could do. We'll tweak it parallel. That's a known. And then we'll get these plumb. And then we'll just try to see how we are for square.
What I'm gonna do right now, in a perfect world, if that fence wasn't there, I could pull a string line, but I don't have that. So I'm just gonna hold this plumb with this way and just see if we're pretty close to in line with the house, which I think we are. That'll at least help me narrow down this unit for square. Brett's favorite band is only one direction. So we're in a little bit of a pickle here. I'm making this up as we go, which is the best way to be able to do a project like this, is to be able to think on the fly, have two or three different ways of figuring things out. Because it's never just like do A, B, C, and you get the equation. It's not like that. And it's good for Brett to be here because he's an apprentice and he's going to learn. Green line is the house. We have 117 and 3 quarter here. This dimension has to match. Then we have 110 and 5 eighths this dimension, and this is off by two inches. So we need to make these the same. Now what I'm, I'm like I said, I'm gonna be back and forth here a little bit. What I might end up doing is I might do a Pythagoras theory, Pythagoras theorem, whatever. So I'm gonna calculate the dimension from here to here from here to here. So this would be like A squared, B squared, C squared. So if you guys remember from school, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we're gonna try that first. Then it's manipulating. We, I've drawn these red circles to show the position of the post in the hole so I know which way I can go. This one is nice and centered, so I could shorten it this way and probably shorten this one this way, and it all depends on the relative position of the post in the other holes. So that's the hardest darn part about this whole thing. So it's gonna be some back and forth. We're gonna figure it out and I'll show you how we did it. We're just gonna see where we're at right now if we're even remotely square. And that'll be our benchmark. So 117 and 3 quarter squared was 13,865.06. When you're doing it on your calculator, you can just go plus 110.625 squared. So this is 12,000. 237.89. So don't forget to hit equals. So C squared equals 26,102.95 inches. But then if you remember, you got to take the square root. So if 161, oh, 161.56. So basically 161 and a half. We're going to see, Brett, we're going to go see how close we are to that. Just right on the corner. Right, like right there. Yeah. So right now we're 163 and a half. What that means is we're splayed open. So we either have to move that post that way or this post this way. So it might be a combination of the two. This dimension's too long, which means this post has to move this way or this one has to move that direction. So we don't want to move this one this way because that makes this dimension shorter because we, we need to manipulate our inside of our holes here. We have room here to go this way with this dimension, so that's fine. But this one's tricky because we basically need to cram this one over a little bit in a little bit and hopefully we have room for this post to move over. So if we move that over, that makes that better. But then we really have to crank that one this way. Oh God, I hope the tub is 
square with the house and everything because the deck will be all buggered up too. That post we can't move because of the downspout. Right? Yeah. We can't move that or it's going to bugger that up. That one this way, max this one that way, crank that one that way. That's fun. So we've moved this post around. We moved it this way and we moved it this way. We're just going to worry about this dimension right now, which is now 112 and 3 8. So I'll do that. I'll make my equation. I'll just. So you go 117.75 squared plus 112.375 squared equals whatever that answer is. Hit the square root button 162.75. So let's check that for 162 and a half. So for now, we know that we're square. Now we need to get this post to match dimensions. 112 and a half, 112 and three eighths, close enough for now. 117 and a three quarter, and we move this over already. So now this number is smaller. So now we just need to manipulate these two. So this one as far as it can this way, this one, Whatever dimension we can get out of this, we're gonna basically shorten this one that way and make sure we're parallel to the house. So we want the post to just move straight over. Right. Yeah, so we're gonna put that two by four there so that we, we know pretty close or dimension the one direction doesn't change. And don't forget to watch our video on how to remove a screw when it's sunken too far and it pulls the wood off. We got a video on that, a short one. Thumbnail okay, so I'm gonna... <laughs> So Brett, directly this way, as far as the post hole will let you. So directly towards me. Nice. Right around there. Yep. Okay. Let's just do this. 115 and a half. Shit, so we're gonna have to just. Go back a bit. No, nope, Well, far. let's try to just That's max it nice. right out. Okay. Max it right out. I'll step on this so we don't. So put the post at an angle. Yep. And then just slide it like right against the bottom of the hole. One sixteen and a quarter over there. We got it to one sixteen and a half. This dimension, we're still parallel to the house within an eighth. I don't think we're going to get it perfect. I'm going to have to just shut the OCD off a little bit. We're going to do a diagonal corner to corner and see how close we are. Yes. One sixty one and a half. Yep. One sixty one and three quarters. Juicy. Nice, hey? Good. So this one ended up being one sixteen and a half. Diagonal measurement. We were one sixty one and a half this way 161 and three quarter this dimension everything is really close within a within a quarter inch let's say there's a lot more factors that are going to tweak as we tweak the plumb it's going to adjust everything a little bit i think we're pretty darn close so i'm going to show you a trick how we can get away with using four turnbuckles instead of eight which is going to be a lot easier for us to be able to work and cut the post down and get the rest of the pergola done. Essentially, I have the braces where I want them. So I'm gonna basically have a band all the way around with just two by fours. So this turnbuckle over here, I'm gonna attach these two together. So when I adjust it plumb, when it, whatever the dimension is at the bottom, I'm gonna match that at the top so that they're perfectly parallel. And then when I plumb this this way, they both are relative to each other. So they'll both be plumb. Same with this one. So this one's braced that way. 
whatever my, I'm going to make the posts parallel at most likely this dimension right here where it's actually pinned and held. I'm going to make the top that same dimension. Then when I tweak my plum, it'll be bang on. So that's what we're going to do in a nutshell is everything's going to be tied together and I only need four braces to do this. Brett's going to go ahead and pin these. One thing you want to do, make sure that the braces are square with the world so that you don't have a post that's twisted out of shape. So you can see right now, if we'd pin this, that's going to put the post out of square with the rest of the house. I'm just going to eyeball it. Somewhere around there. So I'll set all these for Brett pretty close to square with the world for each post and then he can pin those. Good to go. What I'm going to do right now, this is the only post that I have two braces on. I'm going to set it perfectly plumb. I've taken the screws out of these lath. These are, they're four foot lath by the way. That way I can just tweak the post and I'm not pulling and pushing on these. So the goal of all this is to have all my posts parallel, plumb, and I do the perimeter bracing all the way around. The other thing that I almost forgot, I'm gonna, I gotta move this brace down below this one because my braces are too high and when I cut my posts and I wanna put a two by 10 around the perimeter and joist it out as part of our pergola, my bracing is going to be in the way and I don't want to move it twice. So I'm just going to move it now, get it over with. Now that we have the posts a little more accurate. So when we started, when we were doing our first layouts, I was just get it close. Now we're fine tuning it, get the posts a little more plumb. We have a couple discrepancies in the dimensions. It's not going to change the way we did it the first time. So we're not going to shoot it again and, and just beat a dead horse. The, how we're going to square it up is the exact same. We just got to do it again, but there's no use showing you again and you're just going to get bored. So we're going to get this all fine tuned right now. We made our adjustments. We did the Pythagoras theorem again to get that corner square. We made some adjustments. We're going to double check as we were doing it. You always have to verify that your posts are plumb because that can manipulate your, your square and your dimensions and everything. And every time you change a post, you got to change your dimensions. The drawing helps huge. I don't think we could have done it without that. We would have been a mess. So make a sketch. It always helps me visualize. So we're just gonna go verify they're all plumb. Plumb, plumb. Mm -hmm. We're gonna keep these stakes in place so that when we pour the concrete, it doesn't shift the bottom of the posts around. This one could come back a little bit. Right there. Ah. Uh. Yep. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to verify. Now we're going to do our outside dimensions. I'll write them on the board and then we'll see how we are for diagonals. Here's the outside dimensions that we're at right now. Like I said before, it's really hard to get it perfect. We're gonna go do our diagonal measurements and see how close we are. One sixty-two and a quarter. One sixty-one and seven eighths. So we're within three eighths of an inch. But if you want to verify to see, because the dimensions aren't perfect and each post are a little bit off, probably stick with, we know we're parallel with the house, do your Pythagoras that way and that'll tell you how square you are. Okay, so final dimension, we've changed this six or eight times because every time we adjust it, it changes. But now we're set 112 and a three quarter, 116 and three eighths. Our hypotenuse is 162. Let's see how close we are. And we're not going to edit it because you got to show the reality of the truths. And the reason I'm being particular about this is because we're building a ground level deck later, which is going to be on another video. And I want to, I want these posts square. So I don't have any weird cuts around my deck boards and joists and all that. Hopefully they put the uh, hot tub square with the house or parallel. 
Okay, Trav, check that out. 162 and an eighth. Folks at home, I'm not BSing you. So, corner to corner, we're three eighths out, but that's not accurate because we're not our our side A and A are different than B and B or whatever you want to call it. The Pythagoras is within an eighth of an inch, so we're bang on square. That's what I say. So we're good to go. We're going to perimeter the top. Basically, whatever our outside dimensions are, we're just going to cut two by fours at that, nail it flush to the posts. And other than that, we're then after that, we'll set our height. We'll do our two by tens. So we have these boards on. And what's nice about that is now nothing can shift out of the way. So what I mean is that brace that way will, could adjust both of these posts this direction. Same with that one. It can move both of those that direction. Everything's plumb right now. What I like about that is nothing will move. We've kept the bottom braces. We're going to pour concrete next. The, that way if we dump a wheelbarrow in, it's not going to kick the bottom of the post. We're still going to be careful. Um, if I need to adjust anything later, I can. I don't think we'll need to. And uh, obviously this brace setup wasn't, maybe wasn't as useful as I thought it was going to be at the beginning. But if you're doing pilings or anything like that, you can probably see how effective it could be in the right situation. The problem with this one is we had to make sure that the pergola was parallel with the house, square with the world. Um, that way when we build the deck, all the deck boards are square, all the joists are square. So we're gonna be good, we're good to go. The other thing I wanna show you, and good thing we were mindful of this as we were going, is if you look in this corner here, now that we have our two by fours on, I know our posts are also square with the world because it just sits tight here and it's also sitting tight there. And it's like that on every corner, all four corners. Basically that was the hardest part of the whole thing. The freestanding pergola, definitely tricky, more trickier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, let's get on with it. One thing to keep in mind, or to verify that you are doing a good job, is if this post and the back post are parallel with each other or plumb or in line, when you rock back and forth, that back post should disappear all at the exact same time. So you gotta look at the bottom and also look at the top. And when you move back and forth, it should disappear all at the exact same time. And if it doesn't, maybe one post's out of plumb from, me, from the other. So we're, we're good if you actually check all the way around. Every single post here is flush and plumb with each other, which is just verification that you're on the right path. So now it's time to figure out the height of our posts. Originally, when I talked to the homeowner, we were gonna go top a pergola to here, but we're also using two by tens, which would bring it down nine and a quarter. And I feel like it's too close to the, the hot tub. Like if you're sitting on the, the deck of the tub, you're only about five feet to the bottom. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna level over from this drip cap and I'm gonna mark it here and that'll be our height. And then we'll be two by tens here, maximize the height, we can still open the windows and then I'll show you how I'm going to do it with basic tools. I could cheat and just shoot a laser level all the way and shoot the four points, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it the old school way. So right here, it doesn't matter height. There's no real, we're just going to go flush with this uh, smart trim. Bang. Now, because all my posts are plumb, I can use a square, okay? If everything's plumb and true, you can use a square. So now, I'm just gonna set that mark. Then what I'm gonna do, you'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick a two by four from there to there, and I'm gonna get some help from Brett. We're gonna level that bad boy. Once it's level, he's gonna screw it. I'll make another pencil mark and then we'll just chase ourselves around and we'll see if that post to this post is level within, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch. So let's see how good we are. So I've pinned that end on my line. My pencil marks on the top side of the two by. Then what I'll do is I'll just adjust this. 
So we're perfectly level. Let's try that. So I've got my mark. I might as well chase myself around with the square, make all my marks so later I can saw it. Now, if, you, if you're by yourself, what you can do, but you have to verify that you're on your mark, is I'm just gonna set a nail at three and a half below my line Then I could just set a two by four there, put another nail randomly as long as I'm close to level, verify this, go back over there, level it deadly, mark it, and then just repeat that a couple more times. Verify that the last two posts are within reason, and that's how you do it by yourself, or that's how you do it with basic tools. We're on the home stretch. I've set a nail three and a half inches below my line over there. Let's see if I have enough core strength to get this two by twice over there. Come on, baby. Come up. Yeah, just watch me struggle, I don't you? Right. Nice, yeah. So I don't have to pin that end, I'm sitting on the nail. It's level. It's, yeah, it's, it's actually very good. It's, I'm, it's better than what I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna finish marking these out, cut them off, and then we're ready to put the joists up. So now that we're doing the perimeter board or your rim joist, whatever you want to call it, I just want to try to pick the nicest two by tens for that, the straightest. Hopefully they won't check down the middle later. We're going to take a chance, obviously. And then I'm just gauging where to cut it because I don't want to just use this end because it's already split. So I'm just going to basically put it right here because I can cut this knot off. And then I make sure all my ends are nice and square because in theory, everything's level. So every, all my cuts should be square and everything should fit nice and tight. I do wish I had a bigger speed square right now for accuracy. It's not bad, it's not great. So the other thing I've done is I'm doing, obviously where Brett is, where we hung the first one, I'm gonna do this one next, because I wanna overlap the end cuts with this board running this direction, because I feel like if you're on the deck and looking this way, that's the, the view that you're gonna see the most, so that you want the ugliest cuts hidden. Now I gotta crown this up. Doesn't matter, it's the rule of the trade, always crown up. In my other deck video, the simple one that we, we have online and on the channel, it shows you what crown is. But basically, these are parallel and they're either gonna curve like that or curve like this. And if it's curving like that, which it is, 
That means this is crown up. And then whatever is the nicest side is the side we're gonna to put to the out. If you actually think ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that right now. now I want minimal screws on the outside. So we're just gonna do two for now. And then on the insides we'll toenail in. So I want minimal screws on the perimeter. We couldn't get that all done in one day, so we're back at it. We're just gonna joist this thing out. So this tip that I'm gonna give you right now is super handy for figuring out your spindle spacings. So whether that's an interior railing, a deck railing, or a pergola just like this. Because normally when you're doing a stud layout, it's just 16 centers. It's a little bit different. Whereas this scenario, I want all the joists to be exactly the same distance apart. So I'm gonna show you the math on that. So remember, our house is here. Our joist direction is this way. So what I need to know is basically the dimension from the inside of this face to the inside of this face, which is the same as the outside of the post to the outside of the post, which is 124 and three quarter. My other side's a little bit bigger. I'll go with the smaller dimension. It's not perfect like we talked about. So then what we'll do is we're gonna do this, I'm gonna draw some math down here. So from inside to inside, 124 and three quarter. So when you're figuring out your spindles or your joists and you want each space to be the exact same, this is how you do it. So when you look at this as a setup, this is a space with whatever your uh, material is gonna be, whether it's a spindle, here we're gonna have an inch and a half two by 10. So it's, we're gonna count this as one unit. Space, let's call it space and joist is one unit. Space and joist is another. So if we're counting one space, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this is where the kicker comes in because this last one is just an empty space we don't have the spindle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an inch and a half into our equation so that it's space plus joist. So 124.75 plus 1.5 is 126 and a quarter. So now, or 126 and a quarter. That's what we're gonna divide it by. I already kind of know how I think it'll work. So now it'll be divided by, actually I'll show you a different way of doing it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So at the very beginning, when you're figuring out, okay, what is my rough spacing gonna be? Like if you're doing spindles, you'd be four, let's say four and you're doing a wood spindle be five and a half. So that's your spacing. So you'd go 124 and three quarter divided by five and a half just to get you roughly how many spaces you need. So in this scenario, I just went 124 and three quarter, 0.75, and I wanted roughly 16 inch centers. That's roughly what we want. We're gonna fine tune that. 124.75 divided by 16 equals 7.8 spaces. So you can't have a fraction of a space. So you either make it seven spaces or you make it eight. Okay. So let's go, let's go what seven spaces gonna give us and what's eight spaces. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna stick with this dimension because we wanna 
be able to divide it by full sections. So we added that extra inch, inch and a half. 126.25 divided by seven spaces. So 126 and a quarter divided by seven spaces equals 18 inches per space. Eight spaces, 126.25 divided by eight. So that equals 15, I'm gonna just say 15 and three quarter. 15.75 per space. So I think I'm gonna go with the eight spaces. So it's 15 and three quarter. My brain ain't working too good. So inside to inside is 14 and a quarter. Sorry, getting a little sloppy here. So 15 and three quarter is the space. So now I know my gap in between is 14 and a quarter. So inside to inside, 14.25. And I think that'll be perfect. Then if you want to calculate, <clears throat> yeah, so let's, I, when I was in school, I always figured it out in reverse just to verify. So we know, so we're gonna go 15 and three quarter times eight, and then we're gonna minus off this inch and a half and see if we get this number. So 15. 0.75 times 8 minus 1.5 is 124 and a half. Because when you're doing fractions, it would have been like 15 and 13 16. It's like when you're doing spindles in a house, it, you're going to go exactly by the, the decimal place and how you do that. So let's figure it out. Sorry, I'm going the long way. 126 and a quarter divided by eight spaces is technically 15.78125. So if you want to figure it out exactly precision, just go th that decimal plus 15.78125 equals, and then what I do is I write it down. I go this plus is 31.56, and then just hit equals, 47.34 equals 63.125 equals 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 and then you won't get you won't get shorted on your size because you're going to be bang on your decimal place i know the imperial system sucks because then you have to convert the decimal into inches and sixteenths of an inch it is a pain so it might be even better just to switch it to metric because it is better i'll give you that anyway that's what we're going to go with and because my sizing isn't deadly perfect on this scenario, I could probably just go 15 and 13 16. So I'll figure that out. I'm gonna lay it out. We're gonna joist this thing and then we're done. So this top row is the exact decimal placing. And then down below, I'm just doing my conversions. I know it's slow, but then I can just have the guys yell this out as I'm doing my layout. So here, I just want to know, okay, is 0.56, is that close to 9 16 What's nine divided by 16? 0.56, right? And I'm just gonna round up to a 16th here or there. What's 0.34? It's about 3 eighths, 3 eight. So even if you wanna make a chart, you go 3 eighths equals 3 7 five. Uh, 7 16 equals 4 3 7 five. And you could do a chart. Right, so we're gonna go 5 16 equals 3, 1, 2, 5. So we're gonna go 47 and 5 16 1, 2, 5 I think is an eighth, 63 and an eighth. What's 0. 0.9? Let's go 15 16 15 16 equals 9, 3, 7. Uh, seven eighths, eight, seven, five. 
So this one, whatever, doesn't matter. 78 and 15 sixteenths. What's a 6 8? See? 13 sixteenths. Oh shit, yeah, 5 eighths. See? 5 eighths equals 6 2 5. 11 16 so it's just 11 divided by 16 see it's hard one day if you do this for a million years you'll remember all the decimal places 94 and 11. ah seven sixteenths one ten and then a one last one's 126 and a quarter so bang we're dead on So we got it all done, a little more detail than I thought, took a little longer than I thought, but you got to get it nice and square so that everything else works. I think it looks awesome, nice modern pergola. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to check out our other deck videos.